it was when the whole congregation of the children of Israel came into the wilderness of Zin in the first month, and the people stayed in Kadesh, Miriam, the daughter of Amram and Jochebed died and was buried there. She was the sister of Aaron and Moses. She was called Miriam the prophetess. After the Israelites' successful crossing of the Red Sea, she sung a victory song. She took the timbrel in her hand, and all the women went out after her with timbrels and with dances. Miriam answered them, Sing to the Lord, for he has triumphed gloriously. The horse and its rider he have thrown into the sea. Now there was no water for the congregation, so they gathered against Moses and Aaron again. The people contended with Moses and spoke saying, If only we had died when our brethren died before the Lord. Why have you brought up the assembly of the Lord into this wilderness, that are animals and we should die here? And why have you made us come up out of Egypt, to bring us to this evil place? It is not a place of grain, figs, vines, or pomegranates, nor is there any water to drink. Therefore, Moses and Aaron went from the presence of the assembly to the door of the tabernacle of meeting, and they fell on their faces. The glory of the Lord appeared to them. The Lord told Moses to take the rod and with Aaron gather the congregation together. He was told to speak to the rock before their eyes, and it would yield its water, and he would bring water for them out of the rock and give drink to the congregation and their animals. Moses took the rod from before the Lord as he commanded him. Moses and Aaron gathered the assembly together before the rock, and he said to them, Hear now, you rebels! Must we bring water for you out of this rock? But instead of Moses speaking to the rock as the Lord had told him, he lifted his hand and struck the rock two times with his rod, and the congregation and their animals had water to drink. Then the Lord spoke to Moses and Aaron, Because you did not believe me, to hallow me in the eyes of the children of Israel, therefore, you will not bring this assembly into the land which I have given them. Now, because of Moses' disbelief, he and Aaron would not enter into the promised land of Canaan. Moses hit the rock twice when the Lord said for him to speak to the rock. Moses showed a lack of respect for the Lord God's holiness, and did not honor him in the presence of the congregation. He and Aaron would not take the assembly into the land, which the Lord had given them. This was at the water of Meribah, because the children of Israel contended with the Lord, and he was hallowed among them. The Israelites turned and journeyed into the wilderness of the way of the Red Sea, as the Lord spoke to Moses, and they skirted Mount Seir for many days. The Lord spoke to him saying, You have skirted this mountain long enough, turn northward, and command the people saying, You are about to pass through the territory of your brethren, the descendants of Esau, who live in Seir, and they will be afraid of you. Therefore, watch yourselves carefully. Do not meddle with them, for I will not give you any of their land, no, not so much as one footstep, because I have given Mount Seir to Esau as a possession. You will buy food from them with money, that you may eat, and you will buy water from them with money that you may drink. Moses sent messengers from Kadesh to the king of Edom to say, Thus says your brother Israel, you know all the hardship that befallen us, how our fathers went down to Egypt, and we dwelt in Egypt a long time, and the Egyptians afflicted us and our fathers. When we cried out to the Lord, he heard our voice and sent the angel, and brought us up out of Egypt, now here we are in Kadesh, a city on the edge of your border. Please let us pass through your country. We will not pass through fields or vineyards, nor will we drink water from wells, we will go along the king's highway, we will not turn aside to the right hand or to the left until we have passed through your territory. The ancestors of the children of Israel, or Jacob as he was called before the Lord changed his name to Israel, are the brethren of the ancestors of the children of Esau. Jacob and Esau were twins. Then the king of Edom said to him, You will not pass through my land, unless I come out against you with the sword. Therefore, the children of Israel said to him, We will go by the highway, and if I or my livestock drink any of your water, then I will pay for it, let me only pass through on foot, nothing more. Then the king said, You will not pass through. Therefore, Edom came out against them with many men and with a strong hand. Thus, 
Edom refused to give Israel passage through his territory, so Israel turned away from him. When they passed beyond their brethren, the descendants of Esau who dwelt in Seir, away from the road of the plain, away from Elath and Ezion Geber, they turned and passed by way of the wilderness of Moab. Then the Lord said to Moses, Do not harass Moab, nor contend with them in battle, for I will not give you any of their land as a possession, because I have given Ar to the descendants of Lot as a possession. The Emim had dwelt there in times past, a people as great and numerous and tall as the Anakim. They were also regarded as giants, like the Anakim, but the Moabites called them Emim. The Horites formerly dwelt in Seir, but the descendants of Esau dispossessed them and destroyed them from before them and dwelt in their place. Moab was a son of Lot by his oldest daughter, therefore the Moabites were descendants of Lot, Abraham's nephew. Now the whole congregation of the children of Israel journeyed from Kadesh and came in Mount Hor. The Lord spoke to Moses and Aaron in Mount Hor by the border of the land of Edom saying, Aaron will be gathered to his people, for he will not enter the land which I have given to the children of Israel, because you rebelled against my word at the water of Meribah. Moses, Aaron, and Eleazar his son went up to Mount Hor, and Aaron was stripped of his garments and the garments were put on Eleazar his son, and Aaron died there on the top of the mountain. Then Moses and Eleazar came down from the mountain. Now when all the congregation saw that Aaron was dead, all the house of Israel mourned for him thirty days. The children of Israel journeyed from the wells of Bani Jachin to Moserah, where Aaron died, and where he was buried, and Eleazar his son ministered as priest in his stead. Aaron the priest went up to Mount Hor at the command of the Lord and died there in the fortieth year after the children of Israel had come out of the land of Egypt, on the first day of the fifth month. Aaron was one hundred and twenty-three years old when he died on Mount Hor. Now, the king of Arad, the Canaanite, who dwelt in the south in the land of Canaan, heard that Israel was coming on the road to Atharim. Then he fought against Israel and took some of them prisoners. Therefore, Israel made a vow to the Lord, and said, If you will indeed deliver this people into my hand, then I will utterly destroy their cities. Therefore, the Lord listened to the voice of Israel and delivered up the Canaanites, and they destroyed them and their cities. The name of that place was called Horma. Horma was a Canaanite city located in southern Judah, near the border of Edom. It was in the beginning called Zephath, but the name was changed when Judah and Simeon captured it and destroyed the city. The children of Israel journeyed from Mount Hor by the way of the Red Sea, to go around the land of Edom, and the soul of the people became very discouraged on the way. The people spoke against God and against Moses saying, Why have you brought us up out of Egypt to die in the wilderness? There is no food and no water, and our soul loathes this worthless bread. Oh, my goodness! There seemed to be no end to this people's constant complaining. Forty years later, and they still wish that they were back in Egypt. Knowing that they lacked nothing during those forty years, and they let their discouragement get them in a heap of trouble. So, the Lord sent fiery serpents among the people, and they bit the people, and many of the people of Israel died. The people then came to Moses and confessed that they had sinned, for they had spoken against the Lord and against him. They asked Moses to pray to the Lord that he take away the serpents from them. Moses prayed for the people. The Lord told Moses to make a bronze fiery serpent and set it on a pole, and it would be that everyone who was bitten, when he looked at it, he would live. Therefore, Moses made a bronze serpent, and put it on a pole, and if a serpent had bitten anyone, when he looked at the bronze serpent, he lived. Now Jesus was talking to Nicodemus, said to him as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness even so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him, will not perish but have eternal life. Jesus was comparing himself to the symbol of the bronze serpent the Lord commanded Moses to make, and as Moses lifted up the bronze serpent for the people who were bitten, they could look upon it and live. Jesus said, And I, if I am lifted up from the earth, will draw all peoples to myself. This he said, signifying by what death he would die. 
it was in no way that the Lord was encouraging idol worship or making of any graven images as the Roman Catholic doctrine teach. They pulled this scripture out of the Bible to justify all graven images, idols, relics, and statues standing in their churches. They tempt the people to be driven to pray, bow down and worship them. The statue of Mary is one widely worshipped. Many people, even some popes have bowed down, prayed, and worshipped the statue of Mary. The statue that was once called Diana, the goddess of the Ephesians, is now called Mary and the statue they call Peter was once called Zeus. The people looked at the bronze image, they did not pray to it, nor did they bow down to it. To them the fiery serpent of the pole was disgusting to look at and they only looked at it because the Lord said if anyone was bitten by a fiery serpent, he could look at the serpent on the pole and he would be healed. Just as it was disgusting to see our Lord Jesus on the cross, who took upon himself all our sins, and we, being sinful, if we look to Jesus, we also would be healed. The serpent on the pole was only a symbol. Scriptures tell us to beware of idolatry. The Lord tell us to take careful heed for he is spirit, unless we act corruptly and make for ourselves a carved image in the form of any figure, the likeness of male or female, the likeness of any animal that is on the earth or the likeness of any winged bird that flies in the air, the likeness of anything that creeps on the ground or the likeness of any fish that is in the water beneath the earth. And we are to take heed, lest we lift our eyes to heaven, and when we see the sun, moon, and the stars, all the host of heaven that God has given to all peoples under the whole heaven as a heritage, and that we feel driven to worship them and serve them, the Lord warns us to take heed and do not do these things. The children of Israel moved on and camped Abath. They journeyed from Abath and camped at Ejabarim, in the wilderness, which is east of Moab, toward the sunrise. From there they moved and camped in the valley of Zeerd. And from there they moved and camped on the other side of Ammon, which is in the wilderness that extends from the border of the Amorites, for the Arnon is the border of Moab, between Moab and the Amorites. Now from there they went to Beer, which is the well where the Lord told Moses to gather the people together, and he would give them water. From the wilderness, they went to Matana, from Matana to Nahalil, from Nahalil to Bamith, and from Bamith, in the valley that is in the country of Moab, to the top of Pisgah, which looks down on the wasteland. Moses sent messengers from the wilderness of Kadimoth to Sihon king of the Amorites with words of peace, asking to pass through their land. Moses promised to keep strictly to the road, and not to turn aside to the right or to the left into fields or vineyards and not drink water from wells. He said that they would go by the king's highway until they have passed through their territory. Sihon was to sell them food for money that they may eat, and give them water for money, that they may drink only he was to let them pass through on foot. But Sihon king of Heshbon did not trust Israel to pass through his territory and he would not allow Israel to pass through his land, for the Lord God hardened his spirit and made his heart obstinate, that he might deliver him into their hand. The Lord said to Moses, See, I have begun to give Sihon and all his land over to you. Begin to possess it, that you may inherit his land. Meanwhile, Sihon gathered all his people together and went out against Israel in the wilderness, and he came to Hahaz and fought against Israel. The Lord delivered him over to them, and Israel defeated him, his sons, and all his people with the edge of the sword and took possession of his land from the Arnon to the Jabbok, as far as the people of Ammon, for the border of the people of Ammon was fortified. Then Israel took all these cities, and they destroyed the men, women, and little ones of every city, they left none remaining. They took only the livestock as plunder for themselves, with the spoil of the cities, which they took. From Aroer, a city which is on the northern bank of the river Arnon at the border between Sihon's territory and the Moabite kingdom, and from the city that is in the ravine, as far as Gilead, there was not one city too strong for them, the Lord their God delivered all to them. Only they did not go near the land of the people of Ammon, anywhere along the river Jabbok, or to the cities of the mountains, or wherever the Lord their God had forbidden them. Israel dwelt in all the cities of the Amorites, in Heshbon, and in all its villages. Heshbon was the city of Sihon king of the Amorites, 
who had fought against the former king of Moab, and had taken all his land from his hand as far as the Arnon. So, Israel gained possession of all the land of the Amorites, who inhabited that country. They took possession of all the territory of the Amorites, from the Arnon to the Jabbok and from the wilderness to the Jordan. The Lord God of Israel dispossessed the Amorites from before his people Israel. Therefore, Israel dwelt in the land of the Amorites. Then Moses sent to spy out Jazer, and they took its villages and drove out the Amorites who were there. Then the children of Israel turned and went up by the way of Bashan. Therefore, Og king of Bashan came out against them, he and all his people to battle at Adri. Then the Lord told Moses not to fear them, for he have delivered him into their hand, with all his people and his land, and they will do to him as they did to Sihon king of the Amorites who dwelt at Heshbon. Therefore, they defeated him, his sons, and all his people, until there was no survivor left him, and they took possession of his land. They took all his cities at that time, there was not a city, which they did not take from them, sixty cities, cities were fortified with high walls, gates, and bars, besides a great many towns. They destroyed them, as they did to Sihon king of Heshbon, destroying the men, women, and children of every city. However, all the livestock and the spoil of the cities they took as booty for themselves. At that time, they took the land from the hand of the two kings of the Amorites who were on this side of the Jordan, from the river Arnon to Mount Hermon Syrian. The Amorites called it Zanir, all the cities of the plain, all Gilead, and all Bashan, as far as Salca and Adri, cities of the kingdom of Agin Bashan. Only Agin Bashan remained of the remnant of the giants. Indeed, his bedstead was an iron bedstead. Now the land, which Israel possessed at that time, from Aroer, which is by the river Arnon, and half the mountains of Gilead and its cities, was given to the Reubenites and the Gadites. The rest of Gilead, and all Bashan, the kingdom of Og, Moses gave to half the tribe of Manasseh. All the region of Argob, with all Bashan, was called the land of the giants. Jair the son of Manasseh took all the region of Argob, as far as the border of the Geshurites and the Machathites, and called Bashan after his own name, Havath Jair. Also, Moses gave Gilead to Machir. To the Reubenites and the Gadites he gave from Gilead as far as the river Arnon, the middle of the river as the border, as far as the river Jabbok, the border of the people of Ammon, the plain also, with the Jordan as the border, from Chinnereth as far as the east side of the Sea of the Arabah, the Salt Sea, below the slopes of Pisgah. The land of Sihon king of Heshbon and Og king of Bashan were given as an inheritance to the Reubenites, to the Gadites, and to the half-tribe of Manasseh. The children of Israel moved and camped in the plains of Moab on the side of the Jordan across from Jericho. Now, Balak saw all that Israel had done to the Amorites. He was exceedingly afraid of the people because they were many, and Moab was sick with dread because of the children of Israel. Moab said to the elders of Midian, Now this company will lick up everything around us, as an ox licks up the grass of the field. Balak was king of the Moabites at that time. He sent messengers to Balaam the son of Beer at Pether, which is near the river in the land of the sons of his people, to call him saying, Look, a people have come from Egypt. See, they cover the face of the earth, and are settling next to me. Therefore, please come at once, curse this people for me, for they are too mighty for me. Perhaps I will be able to defeat them and drive them out of the land, for I know that he whom you bless is blessed, and he whom you curse is cursed. The elders of Moab and the elders of Midian departed with the diviner's fee in their hand, and they came to Balaam and spoke to him the words of Balak. Balaam told them to lodge there for the night, and he would bring back word to them, as the Lord speaks to him. Therefore, the princes of Moab stayed with Balaam. Balaam was not a true prophet of the Lord God, because he did not have the Spirit of God, for he was approached with diviner's fee. He was truly a medium of all the gods and claimed to be a medium of Israel's God and thought he could use sorcery. If Balaam was a true prophet, the first time he had went to the Lord, and had received an answer, it would have been case closed. 
In a matter of fact, he would not have accepted the diviner's fee in the first place for his services. It was each time Balak sent princes to Balaam, it was each time Balaam tried to get an approving word from the Lord. Balaam was motivated by greed. Then God came to Balaam and said, Who are these men with you? Balaam said to God, Balak, king of Moab, has sent to me saying, Look a people have come out of Egypt, and they cover the face of the earth. Come now, curse them for me, perhaps I will be able to overpower them and drive them out. God said to Balaam, You will not go with them, you will not curse the people, for they are blessed. Therefore, Balaam rose the next morning and told the princes of Balak to go back to their land, for the Lord has refused to give him permission to go with them. Balak again sent princes, more numerous and more honorable than the ones before. They came to Balaam and said to him, Thus says Balak, Please let nothing hinder you from coming to me, for I will certainly honor you greatly, and I will do whatever you say to me. Therefore, please come, curse this people for me. Then Balaam answered and said to the servants of Balak, Though Balak were to give me his house full of silver and gold, I could not go beyond the word of the Lord my God, to do less or more. Now therefore, please, you also stay here tonight, that I may know what more the Lord will say to me. Then God came to Balaam at night and said to him, If the men come to call you, rise and go with them, but only the word which I speak to you, that you will do. Therefore, Balaam rose the next morning, saddled his donkey and went with the princes of Moab. Then God's anger was aroused because Balaam went with the men, and the angel of the Lord took his stand in the way as an adversary against him. Balaam was riding on his donkey, and his two servants were with him. Now the donkey saw the angel of the Lord standing in the way with his drawn sword in his hand, and the donkey turned aside out of the way and went into the field. Then Balaam struck the donkey to turn her back onto the road. The angel of the Lord then stood in a narrow path between the vineyards, with a wall on this side and a wall on that side. When the donkey saw the angel of the Lord, she pushed herself against the wall and crushed Balaam's foot against the wall, so he struck her again. Then the angel of the Lord went further and stood in a narrow place where there was no way to turn either to the right hand or to the left. When the donkey saw the angel of the Lord, she lay down under Balaam, so Balaam's anger was aroused, and struck the donkey again with his staff. Then the Lord opened the mouth of the donkey, and she said to Balaam, What have I done to you, that you have struck me these three times? Balaam said to the donkey, Because you have abused me, I wish there were a sword in my hand, for now I would kill you. So, the donkey said to Balaam, Am I not your donkey on which you have ridden, ever since I became yours, to this day? Was I ever disposed to do this to you? Balaam said no. Then the Lord opened Balaam's eyes, and he saw the angel of the Lord standing in the way with his drawn sword in his hand, and he bowed his head and fell flat on his face. The angel of the Lord said to him, Why have you struck your donkey these three times? Behold, I have come out to stand against you, because your way is perverse before me. The donkey saw me and turned aside from me these three times. If she had not turned aside from me, surely, I would also have killed you by now, and let her live. Balaam said to the angel of the Lord, I have sinned, for I did not know you stood in the way against me. Now therefore, if it displeases you, I will turn back. Then the angel of the Lord said to Balaam, Go with the men, but only the word that I speak to you, that you will speak. Then Balaam went with the princes of Balak. Now when Balak heard that Balaam was coming, he went out to meet him at the city of Moab, which is on the border at the city of Moab, which is on the border at the Arnon, the boundary of the territory. Then Balak said to Balaam, Did I not earnestly send to you, calling for you? Why did you not come to me? Am I not able to honor you? Balaam said to Balak, Look, I have come to you. Now, have I any power at all to say anything? The word that God puts in my mouth that I must speak. Balaam went with Balak, and they came to Kerjath Huzoth. And Balak offered oxen and sheep, and he sent some to Balaam and to the princes who were with him. 
It was the next day that Balak took Balaam and brought him up to the high places of Baal, that from there he might observe the extent of the people. Then Balaam said to Balak, Build altars for me here, and prepare for me here seven bulls and seven rams. Balak did just as Balaam had spoken, and Balak and Balaam offered a bull and a ram on each altar. Then Balaam said to Balak, Stand by your burnt offering, and I will go, perhaps the Lord will come to meet me, and whatever he shows me I will tell you. Therefore, he went to a desolate height. God met Balaam, and he said to him, I have prepared the seven altars, and I have offered on each altar a bull and a ram. Then the Lord put a word in Balaam's mouth, and said, Return to Balak, and so you will speak. Therefore, Balaam returned to Balak, and there he was, standing by his burnt offering, he and all the princes of Moab. Balaam took up his oracle and said, Balak the king of Moab has brought me from Aram, from the mountains of the east. Come, curse Jacob for me, and come, denounce Israel. How will I curse whom God has not cursed? And how will I denounce whom the Lord has not denounced? From the top of the rocks, I see him, and from the hills, I behold him, there. A people dwelling alone, not reckoning itself among the nations. Who can count the dust of Jacob, or number one-fourth of Israel? Let me die the death of the righteous, and let my end be like his. Then Balak said to Balaam, What have you done to me? I told you to curse my enemies, and you have blessed them bountifully. Balaam answered and said, Must I not take heed to speak what the Lord has put in my mouth? Then Balak said to him, Please come with me to another place from which you might see them, you will see only the outer part of them and will not see them all, curse them for me from there. So, he brought Balaam to the field of Zophim, to the top of Pisgah, built seven altars, and offered a bull and a ram on each altar. Balaam said to Balak, Stand here by your burnt offering while I meet the Lord over there. Then the Lord met Balaam and put a word in his mouth, and said, Go back to Balak, and so you will speak. So, Balaam came to Balak, and there he was, standing by his burnt offering, and the princes of Moab were with him. Balak said to him, What has the Lord spoken? Then Balaam took up his oracle and said, Rise up, Balak, and hear. Listen to me, son of Zippor. God is not a man, that he should lie, nor a son of man, that he should repent. Has he said, and will he not do? Or has he spoken, and will he not make it good? Behold, I have received a command to bless, he has blessed, and I cannot reverse it. He has not observed iniquity in Jacob, nor has he seen wickedness in Israel. The Lord his God is with him, and the shout of a king is among them. God brings them out of Egypt, he has strength like a wild ox. There is no sorcery against Jacob, nor any divination against Israel. It now must be said of Jacob and of Israel, Oh, what God has done! Look, a people rise like a lioness, and lift itself up like a lion, it will not lie down until it devours the prey and drinks the blood of the slain. Then Balak said to Balaam, Neither curse them at all, nor bless them at all. Then Balaam answered and said to Balak, Did I not tell you saying, All that the Lord speaks, that I must do? Then Balak said to Balaam, Please come, I will take you to another place, perhaps it will please God that you may curse them for me from there. Therefore, Balak took Balaam to the top of people that overlooks the wasteland. Then Balaam said to Balak, Build for me here seven altars, and prepare for me here seven bulls and seven rams. Balak did as Balaam had said and offered a bull and a ram on every altar. Now when Balaam saw that it pleased the Lord to bless Israel, he did not go as at other times, to seek a used sorcery, but he set his face toward the wilderness. Balaam raised his eyes, and saw Israel encamped according to their tribes, and the Spirit of God came upon him. Then he took up his oracle and said, The utterance of Balaam the son of Beer, the utterance of the man whose eyes are opened, the utterance of him who hears the words of God, who sees the vision of the Almighty, who falls down, with eyes wide open. How lovely are your tents, O Jacob! 
your dwellings, O Israel. Like valleys that stretch out, like gardens by the riverside, like aloes planted by the Lord, like cedars beside the waters. He will pour water from his buckets, and his seed will be in many waters. His king will be higher than Agag, and his kingdom will be exalted. God brings him out of Egypt, he has strength like a wild ox, he will consume the nations, his enemies, he will break their bones and pierce them with his arrows. He bow down, he lies down as a lion, and as a lion, who will rouse him. Blessed is he who blesses you and cursed is he who curses you. Then Balak's anger was aroused against Balaam, and he struck his hands together, and Balak said to Balaam, I called you to curse my enemies, and look, you have bountifully blessed them these three times. Now therefore, flee to your place. I said I would greatly honor you, but in fact, the Lord has kept you back from honor. Then Balaam said to Balak, did I not also speak to your messengers whom you sent to me saying, If Balak were to give me his house full of silver and gold, I could not go beyond the word of the Lord, to do good or bad of my own will. What the Lord says that I must speak. Now, indeed, I am going to my people. Come, I will advise you what this people will do to your people in the latter days. It was then that Balaam took up his fourth oracle and said, The utterance of Balaam the son of Beer and the utterance of the man whose eyes are opened, the utterance of him who hears the words of God and has the knowledge of the Most High, who sees the vision of the Almighty, who falls down with eyes wide open. I see him but not now, I behold him but not near, a star, the Messiah will come out of Jacob, a scepter, the Messiah the Lord Jesus will rise out of Israel and batter the brow of Moab and destroy all the sons of tumult. Edom will be a possession, seer also, his enemies will be a possession while Israel does valiantly. Out of Jacob 1, the Messiah will have dominion and destroy the remains of the city. Balaam now see a vision of the Messiah, the Lord Jesus who would come in their future. Then Balaam looked on Amalek, and he took up his oracle and said, Amalek was first among the nations but will be last until he perishes. Then Balaam looked on the Kenites, and he took up his oracle and said, Firm is your dwelling place, and your nest is set in the rock, nevertheless, Cain will be burned. How long until Asher carries you away captive? Then he took up his oracle and said, Alas! Who will live when God does this? But ships will come from the coasts of Cyprus, and they will afflict Asher and afflict Eber, and so will Amalek, until he perishes. Then Balaam rose, departed, and returned to his palace, Balak also went his way. After this, Israel remained in Acacia Grove, and the people began to commit harlotry with the women of Moab. The Moabites invited the people of Israel to the sacrifices of their gods, and the people ate and bowed down to their gods. So, Israel was joined to Moab's god Baal of Peer, and the anger of the Lord was aroused against Israel. They provoked him to jealousy with foreign gods, with abominations, they provoked him to anger. They sacrificed to demons not to God, to gods they did not know, to new gods, new arrivals that their fathers did not fear. And the Lord God sent a plague among the children of Israel. Then the Lord said to Moses, Take all the leaders of the people and hang the offenders before the Lord out in the sun, that the fierce anger of the Lord may turn away from Israel. So, Moses said to the judges of Israel, Every one of you, kill his men who were joined to Baal of Peer. Indeed, one of the children of Israel came and presented to his brethren a Midianite woman in the sight of Moses and in the sight of all the congregation of the children of Israel, who were weeping at the door of the tabernacle of meeting. Now when Phinehas the son of Eleazar, the son of Aaron the priest, saw it, he rose from among the congregation and took a javelin in his hand, and he went after the man of Israel into the tent and thrust both of them through, the man of Israel, and the woman through her body. Then the plague was stopped among the children of Israel. Those who died in the plague were twenty-four thousand. The Lord destroyed from among all the men of Israel who followed Baal of Peer. Then the Lord spoke to Moses saying, Phinehas the son of Eleazar, the son of Aaron the priest, has turned back my wrath from the children of Israel, because he was zealous with my zeal among them, 
so that I did not consume the children of Israel in my zeal. Therefore say, Behold, I give to him my covenant of peace, and it will be to him and his descendants after him a covenant of an everlasting priesthood, because he was zealous for his God, and made atonement for the children of Israel. Now the name of the Israelite who was killed, who was killed with the Midianite woman, was Zimri the son of Salu, a leader of a father's house among the Simeonites. The name of the Midianite woman who was killed was Kajbi the daughter of Zur. Zur was head of the people of a father's house in Midian. Then the Lord spoke to Moses saying, Harass the Midianites, and attack them, for they harassed you with their schemes by which they seduced you in the matter of Peer and in the matter of Kajbi, the daughter of a leader of Midian, their sister, who was killed in the day of the plague because of Peer. Therefore, the Lord destroyed from among all the men of Israel who followed Baal of Peer. Thank you for listening. If you like this video, please like, subscribe and share. Thanks.